Hello everyone. Welcome to Red Sister. Myself Karthik Ponnuswamy. Today we are going to learn one of the concepts called forking in Git. It is not quite uh, oftenly used, but it still try to understand how the forking works. So there is a concept called forking, which is nothing but the process of creating a new code base. The process of creating a new code base by using the remote repository in the remote repository. Let's say you have a remote repository, right? Like whatever you have the code base and you are going to create a copy of it, copy of it and have it as a code base as called nothing but a forking code base. So typically, let's let me explain this one. In typical way, what we do in the remote repository, we have original repository, right? In the remote, we have original repository where developer one, developer two, developer three will take a clone of it and whatever the changes they do, they will do push and pull all the stuff, right? This is a typical normal way of doing it. But some reason, if the developer feels like sat not satisfied with the way how the project is going on, what they can do is they can take a copy of it and uh, work on it separately. Which means, let's say, uh, in the remote repository, in the remote, there is a original repository, he can fork it. So there is no command line uh, commands to uh, do a forking. You can do it in the graphical user interface. Let's say if you use GitHub or GitLab, you can have an option to fork it. So once you fork it, you will create a copy of it from the remote repository. In the remote, it will copy the original repository and it is nothing but a forked repository. So here the developer 1, 2, 3, these guys can able to clone it and push and pull all the same thing what they can do. But the connection between the forked repository to the remote repository will be blocked, which means like any changes which is happening in the forked repository is not going to be synced back to the original repository. So updates to this forked repository is not going to be synced with the original base repository. So typically, if one team is doing something, the development on the remote uh, original repository, and if some part of the team is not satisfied with what the way the project is going on, what they will do is they can create a forked repository, and on that they will be working on something, and they want to differentiate how they are working differently from these people, and uh, they will uh, try to see how uh, the approach, how they are doing the project. So when we have to do forking, so whenever someone like a developer or any team members or even the project management is not satisfied with the way how it is going on, that is a time they will ask the team to create some fork the particular repository in the remote and on the remote uh, forked repository, they will ask them to work on a different fashion and see is it going to be a get improved or not. So it is not quite commonly used in the real time programming, uh, but uh, it is still try to understand uh, there is a concept called forking in which like you are going to create a copy of the original repository in remote to a fork repository that is also in remote and the other set of team members are going to now use. let's see how the forking works practically okay we know what is the difference between forking and cloning okay so let's say in a typical project where you have some your repository in your project code is in already in repository and uh, you are trying to take a copy of it and you are trying to work on it let's say developer one developer two developer three each individual person working individually and you guys want to push and pull all those stuff right which is a very practical way of doing it but for some reason in terms of like uh, you don't like the project how it is going on and you want to take a, some separate alternate approach okay uh, so without touching the current uh, ongoing project let's say whatever they are doing here right developer one developer two developer three in the pushing and pulling let's say you don't want to touch this but you want to take a separate approach without touching the remote repository what you can do here is you can go by you can go by taking a forking forking is nothing but taking a clone of a particular project in the remote repository as a, another repository and you work on it individually so that like whatever you make change here forking repository is not going to impact the original repository okay so that's the difference let's see how it works so in my uh, project in my account uh, richest tech i created something called fr repo this is nothing better just a own uh, repository i created here just for a uh, testing purpose now what i'm trying to do here is in my local if I go to my particular folder, let's say I want to go to my courses, the git, where I am trying to create something called new brand uh, folder called git. Oops, git. Ah. Git. Okay. Okay. So here, what I'm trying to do here is, I am going to say that I am going to initialize this. I am going to copy this. Okay so first of all instead of doing this one uh, i can do forking here but for some reason i won't be able to do it because of i am the owner of this repository right so which means i cannot uh, fork it directly here the alternate way of doing here is what you guys can do here is 
if you go to your terminal uh, let's say you can create another repository first here saying that the repository you want to some target let's say target for the repo okay you want to have something called target for the repo and you just make it another readme and just save it okay now what you're trying to do here is you want to actually uh, fork it from uh, another let me duplicate this one you guys will see both in parallel let's say what i'm trying to do here is i want to fork it from fr repo to targeted for uh, fork repo okay so first of all i'm going to clone this clone the uh, source repo which is nothing but this fr repo so what i'm going to do here is git clone uh, git clone this particular code right this particular fr repo and save it as something called target for repo you see here it got cloned but with a different name if you go to the folder structure you see here as targeted for repo right now let me go inside this targeted for repo and i will see the git in folder right and also a readme file because it has been just copied from the uh, fr repo right fr repo is a source repo and target is what why I, where i want to go okay now i have targeted folk repo now if i say git remote hyphen v version i see fr repo is this one right now i want to change it to the new repo right so what i should do git let's say i want to say in the remote set the url for the origin then name is nothing but you have to give this code right because whenever i want to push it it has to go to this particular repository so i am giving this now if you see remote yeah if you guys see here now the remote whatever i am going to push it will be going to this targeted for repo not into the source okay not into the fr so let's say if i say touch f1 then git add dot and then git commit with the message let's say f1 added to target for the remote repo okay now this has been added here okay now let's say if i say git status you guys see here everything is clean and branch is clean but it is not yet pushed right now i can do git push the new origin to master branch it's asking for the password so i give my github account password now you guys see here it was rejected okay because it, it was having some other changes here which is not yet uh, updated here right because if you guys see here it is still not yet moved here right so now what i should do i have to use git pull hyphen r origin master now i rebased everything right now you can see here ls hyphen ltr i have f1 and git status is up to date now i have to just push it git push hyphen hyphen all now i'm pushing everything from here right so i'm giving my password now it got pushed okay now if you guys see here i just refresh this one fork repo has having f1 so before i push it i just pulled it and then i push it back so this is how you typically use it so the master to master got pushed so in the targeted folder if you make any changes it is not going to impact the source folder source repository if you guys see here still in your fr repo people are working where the people are actually working they still have the same uh, content whatever you make changes in the targeted fork repo it is not it is not going to impact in the source repository so uh, this is one way of doing it and other way of doing is let's say uh, there is option now they have added something called import repository so what does it mean is you can give the whole repository url here let's say this is the whole repository url right which you want to import it let's say you give like this and let's say you are saying that new target okay something like that okay and then if you see just begin import what it will do is it will take a clone of it and it will be getting into your uh, new repository okay so it just import it automatically okay perfect it is ready now if you go here you see here new target there is a new repository got imported it actually 
uh, does the same thing whatever we did but it actually copied from one repository to another repository in the uh, remote server okay now if you guys see here the definition right whenever we want to do any kind of a separate approach of doing it then you can always go for forking but if you want to regularly working on the same uh, project repository you always go for push and pull so this typically works uh, whenever you're trying to uh, provide any upgrade a platform or upgrading your product or uh, bringing up some enhancements or features if you don't want to touch the existing remote repository then always people do forking and then they will work on it and whenever they're done they will push the changes to the original repository this is how forking works in the real-time programming.